All right, today we're talking about one of the most important techniques for getting a pro quality vocal compression, and that is clip gain automation. Now, most people know about volume automation, and these are two different things. They're similar in the sense that the automation affects the playback volume, but they're entirely different in terms of signal flow. When the signal comes into the channel strip, it comes in at the top, and right up here you can see the gain input, and then it passes through all of the plugins and the channel EQs, the panning, and finally down to the fader for the output. So the volume fader is post-processing, and that's what volume automation controls. It's like having an automatic fader control. Clip gain automation, on the other hand, happens right at the start, before any processing. And the reason that's so important is because clip gain automation gives us the opportunity to level out the volume before it goes into the compressors. So for a lead vocal especially, this is one of the best techniques that you can deploy. Now this is an often overlooked technique, partly because it's lesser known and partly because it's so time consuming. But I guarantee you this is something that you're going to want to do and you will get faster at it as you practice it. So let's get on into this and I'll show you how it works. So take a listen to just the very first line of the vocal, completely dry. This is the stem as it was imported. Everything else is turned off. And listen to the dynamics here. If you're looking for James. Right, so obviously we have a lot of compression work to do. And the real secret to that pro vocal sound compression is to not overstress your compressors, to let your compressors do their job without struggling. And this is one of the biggest keys is clip gain automation. The idea here is we're going to even out the gain on the signal before it hits the compressors to make the compressors job a lot easier and a lot more transparent. And the end result is a way gentler and easier compression job where you don't hear the compressor working because we want a real clear vocal. We don't want to hear the compressor actually working on a vocal. Usually I don't. I'd like to hear a nice, beautifully smooth, dynamically controlled vocal and have my ears not even register that it's being processed. So clip gain in your DAW may be a little different than here in Studio One, but they're all pretty similar. So if you don't know how to do this, just take a minute to look it up. It's a quick Google search or YouTube search, but you absolutely need to know how to do this. And this is going to make getting a great vocal sound so much easier. So let's zoom in on this first word here. So you can see the difference in the gainings, like this little section right here between the crosshairs is much quieter than this section. So here in Studio One, I highlight this section and then I raise the gain here. And you can see if I crank it up, you can see the waveform getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We don't want to make it all the same exactly. Since this is a quieter spot, I still want to leave it slightly quieter than the parts on either side of it. I just want to increase it. And that right there is going to make the compressor's job a lot easier on this little section so it doesn't have so much to recover between this section, this section, and this section. It'll just make a smoother compression job. And if I bring it up too high, it'll sound unnatural. So slightly less than on either side is a good recommendation. This is what a lot of the pros do. They even out the gain signal before it hits the compressor. But there is one more step here. This sharp 90 degree gain increase might sound a little unnatural just in itself. So take a listen. If you're looking. So you can hear the little click, the little jump. If you're looking. It's not very natural. So what you want to do is just like you would in any other lane automation, is you want to take the time to add a couple points and delete these points after you've done your gain increase and then add the little smoothing in on the curves. Now take a listen. If you look so it's a lot more gentle already. I'm going to bring these out a little further. So adding these little curves makes a big difference. And what kind of curves you need to make depends on the waveform. But the goal with these curves on these automation fades is to keep it sounding as natural as possible. So now with the curve like this, let's see if we get it to sound real smooth and natural. If you look in there we go. Those little clippy, clicky, glitchy parts are not there anymore. So you have to take the time to customize your curve or you might hear little glitches, which is totally defeating the point. We want a nice, natural, smooth sounding vocal. And then we would do the same thing here on this next little section. Highlight the section where it's the quietest. 
increase the gain, and then we delete these extra points. And then we bring up the little curve so it stays a little more natural. And I think I might extend this one a little bit. And you can just watch the waveform as you work here. If I extend this one out a little bit more, there we go. Now we have that nice and smooth. Like I said, I want to keep it natural. But that right there actually makes a huge difference for when this hits the compressor. Let's take a listen. If you're looking... There we go. That is an amazing tool to help your compression, especially on something that's crucial like a vocal. And then we would go down the line and we would do this for the entire performance. So I'm going to want to increase the clip gain right here a little bit. The end of this word right here where it drops off. And especially right in here, this is a great example. Let's raise that up. We have it rounded off the edges on this one, but let's take a listen to see if it sounds natural. James! There we go. I'm going to bring this up a little bit as well. Let's take a listen. James! There we are. But this is clip gain automation. You're increasing the quiet spots, and if you need to, you decrease the loud spots. And don't overdo it, and make sure you take the time to smooth out any curves if you need to. You don't want to introduce any glitchy sounds by changing the envelope with any steep 90 degree angles. So you need to take the extra seconds to smooth these out. And remember, you can always zoom in and smooth these out further like this if need be. But you just customize every word in your vocal performance. And like I said, it's time consuming, but you will so thank yourself because it will make your compression job way, way easier. And these louder sections here. There we go. Just by doing that, I have smoothed out these louder sections. Let's do the same thing right here. All right, let's take a listen to this section again. If you're looking for... That clip gain automation has evened that out so much that the compressor is going to have a much easier time. So let's go ahead and do a before and after now just on the clip gain automation on this one phrase. If you're looking for James. 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 And this is something you want to do at the very beginning of the vocal mixing. And like I said, you will get fast at this. You don't have to make everything the same. Keep it natural and keep some dynamics, but we're just taking the edge off the compressors. But I hope you liked that. Hope you got a lot out of it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and i catch you on the next one.